Slattery. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and a very warm welcome to Trivial Pursuit. If I look a bit pale, someone just gave me a bit of their sandwich before I came on, and I've just got a feeling I'll be seeing it again soon. <laughs> anyway, here's an interesting bit of introductory trivia. Did you know that the phrase to humble, to eat humble pie, a lot of people think it's something to do with humility, but it's not. It's to humble is, in fact, a contraction uh, of the word umbles, which is uh, a medieval word. This is true, a medieval word meaning the um, offal of a deer, which is what they used to put in pies if they were poor because they couldn't afford meat. And so it became mixed up with humility. But humility comes from the Latin word humus, which means the ground or the earth, which is what you're close to. Oh, no. <laughs> Yes, hello and welcome to the seventh dimension. Let's get uh, straight on and meet today's three contestants who, uh, looking at them, weren't impressed with my initial statements, uh, but who are today competing for the chance to win a great holiday. Firstly, we say hello and welcome to Simon. Hello. Hiya, Simon. It says you're a journalist and children's writer. Yes. Uh, have, are you published? Um, soon to be. Oh, and, and we'll give it a plug. What is it? Um, well, it's children's short stories. Oh, and poems. Uh, uh, poems, that's very nice. What, with nice illustrations and all that? Yes. Ah, because I uh, sent to um, Sarah Ferguson uh, my idea about her book Budgie the Helicopter, in which Budgie the Helicopter crashes into the Duchess of York. <laughs> and uh, the helicopter's a write-off, I tell you, but um, <laughs> never mind, she didn't write back. Isn't that rude? Anyway, you're most welcome, Simon. Next we say hello to Jo. Hello. Hi, Jo. It says you're a bit of a competition freak, is that right? Yes, yeah, so I like to do all the puzzles in magazines. And... Oh, like those ones where you have to sort of get words and things? Yes. And what's your favourite type of puzzle? Cryptic crossword. No, it's a trivial yeah. pursuit, trivial pursuit. Pardon? Trivial pursuit. Trivial pursuit. Trivial pursuit, that's interesting, Joe. Well, okay, well, so. well, thanks, uh, thanks oh. very much for coming on the show anyway, Joe. And finally, we say hello to Stephen. Hi, Stephen. Hello, Stephen. Hi, it says you're a wine shop manager and you like good food, good wine, and going to the theatre. What's yes. the last thing you saw in the theatre? Last thing I saw in the theatre was, um, it was a fringe play at the, in Islington a couple of weeks ago. Oh, what was it? It was, um, <laughs> Made an impression then. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, Stephen. Well, the main thing is, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the contestants. <laughs> okay, let's get straight on with the game. The aim of which is pretty simple: to be the first person to illuminate all twelve sections of your individual pie. And this you do by answering correctly questions on trivia in various categories. Answer in uh, answer correctly, and a section is illuminated. Answer incorrectly or pass, and I'll throw it open to the other two so they can buzz in after the timeout buzzer has gone. Of course, the very best of luck to all three of you. And the first round comes with the categories which are classic to Trivial Pursuit, being geography, entertainment, history, art and literature, science and nature, and sport and leisure. Simon, we'll start with you, please. Um, entertainment, please. Entertainment for pink, Simon. Which sci-fi character appeared to viewers as a suit of clothes and a bandaged head wearing sunglasses? The Invisible Man. Is correct for pink. <laughs> Joe. Art and literature, please. Art and lit for red, Joe. Which H.G. Wells novel about a draper's assistant became the musical Half a Sixpence? Kips. Kips is correct, yes, well remembered. <laughs> well read. Stephen, over to you, please. Uh, sport and leisure, please. Sport and leisure for Orange, Stephen. Which 100-metre gold medalist was voted 1993 BBC Sports Personality of the Year? Linford Christie. Linford Christie is correct. <laughs> Simon, back to you. Um, science and nature, please. Science and nature for Green, Simon. Which tendon joins the muscles of the calf of the leg to the heel bone? Achilles. Achilles is correct for green. Joe, over to you. Two to go. History, please. History for yellow, Joe. Until the 17th century, on which day each year did the English monarch traditionally wash the feet of as many poor persons as the monarch was years old? Maundy Thursday. Maundy Thursday is correct, yes. Stephen, you're left with blue, which is geography. Which town in Gwyneth was besieged by Yorkists for seven years during the Wars of the Roses, supposedly inspiring a famous Welsh song? I'm sorry, I don't know. OK, anyone else? Joe? Harlech. Yes, as in men of Harlech, that's right. So you pick up a blue, OK? Let's reset the board so you can all have a freedom of choice from the categories. Simon, over to you. Um, 
Art and literature, please. Art and lit for Red Simon. Joseph Heller's novel, Catch-22, is about Americans in which of the armed forces during World War II? Um, Marines. Incorrect. Joe. Air Force. Air Force is correct. Yes, you pick up a red. OK. Joe, and uh, category, please. Entertainment, please. Entertainment for pink, Joe. Manchester-born singer Elaine Bookbinder is better known by which name? Elaine Delmar. Not Elaine Delmar. Simon. Elaine Page. Eh, not, not Elaine Page, no. Or as she likes to be known now, Elaine Page. She's, she's gone a bit posh. <laughs> no, the answer is Elkie Brooks, in fact. OK, Stephen, category, please. Um, entertainment. Please. Entertainment for Pink, Stephen. Who had their only UK number one hit? Single in 1985 with The Sun Always Shines on TV. Aha. Uh -huh. Aha is correct. Let's have a look at the scores after that first round. We see that in joint second place, both with two sections illuminated are Simon and Stephen, but leading by two with four is Joe. <laughs> OK, let's, let's come on to our film and television round now, in which you'll see some clips and some photos. The categories here are personalities, titles, classic portrayals, drama and wild card. And some of these have bonuses, which I'll explain when they crop up. Stephen, we're going to start with you. Please choose. Uh, personalities, please. Personalities for blue. Right. Please, take a look at this. Now, that's Calamity Jane there. Here's the question. Which famous Doris starred in the 1953 movie Calamity Jane? Doris Day. Doris Day is correct, yes. Simon, over to you. Um, portrayals, please. Portrayals for Red. In the sitcom One Foot in the Grave, what is the name of Victor Mildrew's unfortunate wife? Mrs Mildrew. And I'm not going to accept that. No, good try. Anyone else? No, the answer is Margaret. OK, Joe, category, please. Titles, please. Titles for pink. <laughs> That's a bonus question, Joe. Get the first part correct and you get a pink section. Get the second part correct and you can take away a section from either Simon or Steve. Here we go. Right, please, take a look at this. Well, these are my heroes. Bugs Bunny, Porky Pig, Daffy Duck, you're kidding. They're, these are my... I grew up with these guys, you know. <laughs> Trying to reasons I did the film. There's been an eruption. Sorry, that's my, that's my impersonation of Bob Hoskins from The Long Good Friday. And wasn't it dreadful? Here's the question. Name the heavenly Dennis Potter musical drama in which Bob Hoskins starred in 78. Pennies from Heaven. Is correct. You get a pink. You also get the second part of that bonus question. Name the 1988 movie in which Bob Hoskins starred alongside a cartoon rabbit called Jessica. Who framed Roger Rabbit. That's right. Now, which colour section do you want to take away and from whom, please? Uh, yellow. From Stephen. Uh, Stephen hasn't got a yellow. He's got an orange, a blue, or a pink. <laughs> orange. Sorry. Orange. An orange disappears <sighs> from Stephen. And it's your question proper, Stephen. So please choose. Uh, wild card. Wild card for orange. <laughs> OK, that's a bonus question. So same rules apply, Stephen. Please, take a look at this. I've likened uh, the jobs of directing and, and producing as the, the difference between coaching and being the quarterback. OK. Um, that was George Lucas there. Here's the question. Which George, George Lucas movie overtook a Jaws as box office release champion on its release in 77? Star Wars. Is correct for an orange. Is the second part of the bonus question. Name the initialed robot hero of Star Wars. R2-D2. R2-D2 is correct. So, which colour would you like to take away and from whom? I'll take... And orange away from Joe. Please. Well, uh, Joe hasn't got an orange, oh. um, but so uh, you can take you can take a red. A red would be a red disappears from Joe. <laughs> Welcome to the obsessed with orange show. <laughs> what, a, what an idea for a game, uh, Simon. You've got two to go. Um, classics, please. Classics for yellow. Which sitcom is filmed in and around Holmfirth in Yorkshire? Um, Last of the Summer Last Wine. Last of the Summer Wine, that's right. The side-splittingly funny show. And, Joe, you're left with green for drama. Please, take a look at this. The craft is powered by two motorcycle engines. A two-seater, ready soon, may be the car or chopper of the future. Help Wanted, a crew of little green men. So... Uh, flying saucer there. Here's the question. Who wrote the novel from which the 1953 movie War of the Worlds was adapted? Aldous Huxley. Incorrect. 
Simon was there. HG World. It's correct. You get a green. Let's have a look at the scores at the end of that film and television round. We see in third position with three sections illuminated is Stephen, but joint leaders both with four are Simon and Joe. <laughs> OK, now let's go on to our trivia tactics round in which you have to nominate for an opponent the category in which you think they might have more difficulty in answering. The categories being people and places, entertainment, history, wildcard, natural world and sport and leisure. Simon, we'll start with you. Please choose a category for Joe. Um, natural world, please. Natural world for green, Joe. On which plants did Gregor Mendel perform his experiments which led to the discovery of the laws of heredity? I don't know. Anyone? No, the answer is garden peas. <laughs> Peculiarly, but it's true. Joe, please nominate for Stephen. Wild card. Wild card for Red Stephen. The lyrics to many of George Gershwin's memorable songs were written by his brother. What was his first name? Ira. Ira is correct for Red. And Stephen, please choose for Simon. History. Please. History for Yellow Simon. Which of the six wives of Henry VIII had been married twice before and married again after he died? Um, Anne of Cleves. Incorrect. Joe. Anne Boleyn. No. Stephen? Catherine of Aragon. No, Catherine Parr <laughs> is the answer. Never mind. <laughs> OK. Simon, please nominate for Joe. Um, natural World, please. Natural World for Green Joe. Which flavouring, particularly used in confectionery, is obtained from the pods of a type of orchid? Vanilla. Is correct. Joe, please choose for Stephen. Sport and leisure. Sport and leisure for Orange, Stephen. The Prix du Jockey Club, run at Chantilly, is the French equivalent of which English classic horse race? The Derby. Is correct for an orange slice. And finally, Stephen, please choose for Simon. History. Please. History for Yellow Simon. In the 1780s, Arthur Philip commanded the so-called First Fleet that took which group of people from England to Australia? The convicts. Convicts, yes, the first transported convicts. You get a yellow slice at this halfway stage. Oh, excellent, this is what we like, a nice close match. You are all tied with five sections each. Let's see how the score develops after we take this short break. See you in a moment. Welcome back to Trivial Pursuit. Let's have a quick recap on the scores. It's very exciting. It's even Stevens. All three have seven sections remaining to fill. <laughs> right, let's finish off our trivia tactics round. Simon, back to you. Please choose a category for Joe. Um, wild card, please. Wild card for Red Joe. In the film Yellow Submarine, took... In the film, comma, the Yellow Submarine, comma, took the Beatles to which kingdom? Question mark. Magic Kingdom. Not the Magical Kingdom, no. Anyone else? Simon. Land of the Blue Meanies? Not the Land of the Blue Meanies. Good guess. No, it's Pepperland, in fact. Well, I forgot all about that. Joe, please choose for Stephen. Natural World. Natural World for Green, Stephen. Phyllis Silvestris Grampia is the scientific name of which animal now restricted to Britain, i.e. the Scottish Highlands? Uh, red deer. Incorrect. Simon. Wild cat. The wild cat is correct, but you've already got a, a green slice, but well answered nevertheless. Stephen, please choose for Simon. Uh, people and places. People and places for blue, Simon. 
The immensely wealthy ruler of the state of Brunei is not a king, but what title does he hold? Sultan. Sultan is correct for a blue, and I think I had some whispers in the audience. No helping, please, or whispering. OK, let's have a look. We see that in joint third place, both with seven sections remaining to illuminate are Joe and Stephen. But leading by one, with six to go, is Simon. <laughs> OK, but now we come to our control round, and this is where the scores can change radically. I will start by asking a control question. Whoever answers that correctly gains control of the round and the chance to choose whatever categories they need in order to fill up their pie. And the categories here are geography, entertainment, history, art and literature, science and nature, and sport and leisure. Here we go. First control question. What was the name of the little Mexican who gave Pat Boone his 1962 top ten hit, Stephen? Speedy Gonzalez. Speedy Gonzalez, right. So you have control? Oh, stop it. Stop it, really. You have control. Please choose a category. Uh, science and nature. Science please. and nature for green, Stephen. What name is given to blood from which all blood cells have been removed? Plasma. Is correct, yes. Category, please. I'll have a history, please. History, which is yellow. Which American state selected as its flower the Mayflower because of its historical connections with the ship of that name? Massachusetts. Is correct. Well done. Category, please. Uh, entertainment, please. Entertainment for pink, to give you a pink slice. Which actor played the dashing Sergeant Troy in the 1967 film Far From the Madding Crowd? Alan Bates. Incorrect. Anyone else? Terence Stamp, in fact, was the answer. Oh, and there's another bit of trivia here. Uh, a lot of people think that madding means maddening, and they call it Far From the Maddening Crowd, but madding is, in fact, an old English word for frenzied. Ooh. Ooh. Thanks. Right, here's, uh, here's the control question. Which specialist daily newspaper covers the business side of ship? Stephen. Financial Times. Incorrect. Time out. I'll finish off the question. The business side of shipping, insurance and transport. Simon. Hansard. Incorrect. No, it's Lloyd's List, in fact. OK, control question. Which television quiz show derived its name from Superman's home planet? Simon. The Krypton Factor. The Krypton Factor is correct. Simon, category please. Um, entertainment, please. Entertainment for pink. In which game show did the prize list always include a cuddly toy? Uh, generation Game. That's right, the Generation Game. Category please. Art and Literature, please. Art and Lit for red. Which Irish writer's works include the novel The Vicar of Wakefield and the play She Stoops to Conquer? Um... Time out. Joe. Sheridan. Incorrect. Stephen? Sure. No. Oliver Goldsmith is the answer. Control question. What do botanists study? Simon. Plants. Is correct. Category, please. Art and literature, please. Art and lit for red. What name did Manfred B. Lee and Frederick Danay choose both for their joint pen name and for the New York detective hero of their stories? Time out. Stephen. Pinkerton. Incorrect. No, the answer is Ellery Queen. OK. Control question. In which BAFTA-winning series does Edina run a P... Absolutely fabulous. Is correct. Category, please. Uh, geography, please. Geography for blue. Which Venetian bridge was so called because its prisoners passed over it from the judgment hall to prison? Bridge of size. Is correct. Category, please. Entertainment. Please. Entertainment for pink. Who played hypnotist Franklin Madsen in the 1991 film Dead Again? I'm sorry, I've played it. Simon. Kenneth Branagh. Incorrect. Joe. Anthony Hopkins. No, Derek Jacobi is the answer. OK, control question. How is hydrated magnesium silicate known when used in the bathroom? Joe. Bath salts. Incorrect. Anyone else? No, the answer is talcum powder. Control question. During which war was the TV series MASH set? Simon. Korean. Correct. Category, please. Art and literature. Please. Art and lit. In 1993, Emma Tennant published Pemberley, a sequel to which Jane Austen novel? Um... Um, um, Pride and Prejudice. Is correct. Well done. Category, please. Um, art and literature, please. Art and lit for red. Which dramatist wrote in his 78 play Night and Day, I'm with you on the free press. It's the newspapers I can't stand. Arthur Miller. Incorrect. Joe. Rattigan. No. Stephen? No, it's Tom Stoppard. Control question. Which great military leader was born at Ajaccio, Corsica? Joe. Napoleon. Napoleon is correct. Category, please. Entertainment. Entertainment for pink. 
Before I ask the entertainment question, that was the 60-second warning. If the, at the end of that 60 seconds no one has completed all sections of their pie, it's the person with the most sections illuminated who goes on to play for that great holiday. The 60 seconds start now. Joe, what was the name of the dog who accompanied Dick Dastardly in TV's Wacky Races? Muttley. Correct. Category, please. Art and Literature. Art and Lit. Red. What was the sequel to Eric Siegel's best-selling novel, Love Story, named after the hero? Oliver's story. Correct. Category, please. Geography. Geography for blue. On the coast of North Africa, which country is between Algeria and Libya? Gold Coast? No. Simon. Morocco. No. The answer, Egypt. No, the answer is Tunisia. Control question. Shall We Dance was the number from which 56 film musical? Joe. Top Hat? No. Simon. King and I. Is correct. Category, please. Sport and Leisure. Sport and Leisure. Orange. Which jockey won the 1992 2000 Guineas on Rodrigo de Triano? John Reed. No. Stephen was there. Lester Pickett. Is correct. Category, please. Um, art and literature. Art please. and lit for red. What pen name did Samuel Langhorne Clemens use for his books about Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn? Time out. Anyone? Simon was Mark there. Mark Twain. Mark Twain is correct. Category, please. Um, sport and leisure. Sport and leisure. Orange. Which sport has a plane? Right. Well, now, this is interesting. At the end of the control round, we see that in third position with five sections remaining to illuminate is Joe, but it's a tie break between Simon and Stephen as to who goes on to play for the holiday. So, here is your tie break question. Fingers on buzzers. In which city is the Grand Canal the main thoroughfare? Simon. Venice. Venice is correct, Simon. Just got there in time. Well done. <laughs> Well done, Simon. Many commiserations, Joe and Stephen. This, that was a great contest, really close. But commiserations to you as well. You met Simon on very good form. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been great contestants, Joe and Stephen. <laughs> OK, Simon, I'd now like to ask you, please, to join me in the centre of the board to play the ultimate trivia challenge. <laughs> OK, Simon, well done for getting this far in both senses. Um, <laughs> I think... Uh, I, I'm go I hope to wish you bon voyage very soon, because this is the holiday you're about to play for. Now you're playing for a break in one of the friendliest cities in the world, Dublin. Staying at the Central Hotel in the heart of the city, all the main sites are only a short walk away. With theatres, museums and some of the best nightlife outside of London, Dublin is without doubt a jewel in the Emerald Isle. So good luck, Simon, for your Trivial Pursuit holiday. OK, uh, Simon, in order to get to Dublin, you're going to have to answer six questions within 60 seconds. If you pass or answer incorrectly, we'll simply go on to the next category. My advice is don't look at the clock and also um, don't waste too much time, too many seconds, valuable seconds, before saying pass if you don't know the answer. OK, here we go. The very best of luck to you. Your 60 seconds start. Now, which is the most northerly country in the Commonwealth? Um, Canada. Correct. Actor Howard Keel played gambler Gaylord Ravenel in which 51 musical? Oklahoma. No, Showboat. Who was the Archbishop of Canterbury who pronounced Henry VIII's marriage to Catherine of Aragon null and void? Thomas More. No, Thomas Cranmer. What is the name of troubled schoolboy whose story is told in J.D. Salinger's classic novel Catcher in the Rye? Um... Pass. Holden Caulfield, found principally in the Highlands, which is the only large coniferous tree native to Britain? Um, fur. No, the Scots Pine. What was the first East European country to hold an official Formula One motor racing Grand Prix? Hungary. Yes, correct. On which musically blue river does the Budapest stand? Um, Danube. Yeah, correct. In the 1986 film The Fly, who was the star? Jeff Cronenberg. Uh, um, uh, Jeff Goldblum. Is correct. Who was the last British king to lead his army in battle when he fought at Dettingen in 1743? Uh, William IV. No, George II. At the end of Oliver Twist, which villain is tried and Sykes. executed? No, Fagin. Fagin. Which gland situated at the base regulates... Paturity. Paturity gland. Which goalkeeper at the age of 40 became the second oldest man to play football? <laughs> yes! Oh! You said it just as it went, so you are on your way to Dublin. Well done. <laughs> You just got there, you just got there. Well done, you just got there with a nanosecond, and because I am a human computer, a nice I can. What's that? A nice person. A nice person, you're very nice. So, thank you, Simon, for joining us. Thanks to all our contestants, thanks to you, the studio audience, and especially thanks to you at home for tuning in. Please do join us again soon for another exciting edition of Trivial Pursuit. Bye! <laughs>